folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, already playing right now is the new live-action remake from Disney called Beauty and the Beast, which stars Emma Watson as Belle. And I'm definitely going to check this movie out uh, later on, because I still haven't seen the film yet. I, I heard some mixed reviews from critics. Uh, it's already becoming... Uh, a huge success so it's definitely um, doing so well so far I decided to review the 1991 animated version of the same title Beauty and the Beast what else? <laughs> this is the 2010 uh, Diamond Edition release that I picked up um, not too long ago it's only seven years and this was a wonderful release for me to pick up because I didn't have a chance to pick up the 2002 release which at the time Beauty and the Beast had a re-release at the IMAX theater in order to have the special edition to include a deleted song and some improved animation from the, the original 1991 theatrical release where they, they improved the animation to make it look better this time around and not only that but they added the deleted song Human Again with uh, the rest of the cast joining in so it just makes the movie um, quite longer than than its original running time yeah well this was a wonderful release at the time it had uh, tons of great extras right here on the back as you can see right here if I can zoom it up close and this one had uh, the exclusive uh, music princess CD inside right here unfortunately the CD is not inside the, the blu-ray because I just put it inside one of my uh, uh, containers, the, those black containers that I have that I just put in my closet. So I'm just keeping it safely. The CD should play perfectly. Um, it had all the songs here, including other Disney favorites. So, so it's really cool for Disney to include. And unfortunately, they even said that they had a bonus uh, charm with, per with purchase, but unfortunately, you had to get it by mail. Yeah, but it's been expired, as, as you can see. So it's a it's a free disc um, combo pack. It has uh, two Blu-rays plus a DVD inside, and plus the the slip cover is very shiny, as you could tell. See, and you have uh, Belle in this wonderful gold dress of hers, and and of course the Beast that looks like um, an American Bison with um, a cross uh, with um, like hooves and and basically a look of a lion I mean he almost looks like one in the mix with other creatures you know dancing around in inside the ballroom and you can see the rest of uh, of the cast right here with um, Mrs. Potts, Cotsworth, Lumiere Chip, and also uh, the Enchanted Rose. It's uh, very shiny and luxurious right there. Just amazing. So it's it's a wonderful release. Uh, I know there's a brand new uh, 2016 release that's part of the uh, Signature Collection that just came out. Uh, you can definitely pick that up, seeing that this release is sadly out of print unless you can find this release at on eBay or any other website but just be aware by the price because unfortunately you know we have scalpers coming around you know forking your your eye over the price but, but back then yeah <laughs> yeah has everything yeah I, I know there's a code but I already used it and there's a Blu-ray guide in, inside here. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There's the feature. 
So I'm just trying to see if I can make a perfect shot. There's a feature with uh, the bonus material on the second and, and of course the DVD. Just, just amazing right there. Um, anyway, back to the film. I remember I went to see Beauty and the Beast uh, twice at a brand new theater in Glendale, California, which was the the General Cinema, which was actually inside uh, an office building that was right next to McDonald's. And I remember we went to that theater um, several times, but sad to say, that theater has is no longer around anymore because it now became simply an office building. It's it's now uh, Kaiser Permanente, as we know it. So if you actually go to that theater, it's at uh, Milford and, and Central. You can see exactly how the theater used to be. But it's been uh, remodeled, uh, reconstructed, it just looks like an office building now. But anyway, and my god, it, it was so amazing and wonderful having to see such a classic uh, Disney animated feature on the big screen. And it just looks amazing. I always remember the songs that were all written by Alan Minkin, who did the score, along with um, his late partner, a lyrics man, Howard Ashman. Yeah, he passed away due to the complication of AIDS. So he died very young at probably the age of 41, sadly. Oh, and and it just and this was an adaptation of a French story, which also had a, a black and white film that came out in 1946. And I saw that version by the way. It was it was very uh, unique, superb wonderful it had that dark feel to it with german expressionism and you get to see what the wolf you get to see what the beast looks like and and the girl that he's going out with it's just and the woods and all that it was just wow and the castle beautiful but this adaptation is definitely right up there with the 1946 classic and I know there's been several others that followed after this and even before this version as we know it so <laughs> but this one was done just exactly right because we get to see all the characters that they joined in I mean it was part of this the magical spell that they got and how this all seem to change later on until we get to the final end of the film where they finally become as we know it yeah. but of course the, the story is indeed as we as we speak about a young girl and a scary beast as we know it it's a love story and it's very enchanting so Let's get right to the review. It stars Paige O'Hara, who's a Broadway uh, musical actress. She's been working on that uh, before she finally got a chance to, to play and do the voice of Belle. Robbie Benson, who's been uh, considered to be one of the most handsome actors uh, of all time back in the 80s, because he was doing several movies back then and all that and he's actually a good actor I didn't mind him but Robert Benson plays the prince and the beast so he gives it a deeper a much deeper voice before he gets to his actual voice yeah, Richard Wright uh, as Gaston the handsome uh, muscular uh, type of guy who's also a jerk in a way he also has his sidekick uh, LeFou, Le who's played by um, Jesse Cordy. Uh, Jerry Oldback from the TV show Law and Order. He's been in other films too, like FX and many others that follow. 
Uh, David Orden Steers from the TV show MASH, of course. And he's been in other films too, including Better Off Dead, where he played the father. I remember that. Angela Lansbury, a fine, great actress who's been best known for playing the Jessica Fletcher in the TV series Murder, She Wrote. But she also has done a lot of uh, Broadway plays, such as... Uh, Sweeney Todd, that's right. Bradley Pierce, this was uh, his earlier film. I mean, back then he was just doing commercials. I think he was doing commercials for Burger King at the time. And um, he went on to do other films like, uh, you guessed it, Jumanji, uh, The Bowers. Doom Runners, all the rest. He also did the voice of Flounder in the TV series The Little Mermaid, which came out uh, a year later, just after a few years from the 1989 movie. Yeah, Hal Smith, doing the voice of Philippe, the horse. Joanne Worthy, playing the wardrobe. Hard to believe that was her. It's written by Linda... Warburton, the same writer who also wrote uh, many uh, cartoons like Dennis the Menace, and she later went on to write uh, screenplays for other films, including the live action adaptations of Alice in Wonderland, Maleficent, and several others. And it's directed by Gary Trostell and Kurt Wise which is based on the French story Beauty and the Beast by Janine Mary Le Prince de Beaumont. The movie begins, set in a faraway land around France, we see a beautiful high-top enchanted castle where the young handsome prince have lived. Unfortunately, he's a spoiled, selfish, arrogant man who just turned away an old beggar who actually received him a special gift which turned out to be an enchanted rose. The old beggar had transformed herself into a beautiful enchantress which the prince had begged her for forgiveness but it was too late because his punishment was actually transforming him into a hideous beast and he was under a magical spell along with the rest of the crew that's living inside the castle becoming all these uh, accessories she received him a magic mirror in order for him to view far away places in each and every direction. So, to break the spell, the prince must learn to love another, which happens to be a girl as we know it, and earn her love in return before the rose's last petal falls on his 21st birthday. So, that way the, the spell would be broken but if it fails but if he fails he will remain a beast forever so he was under the despair and lost all hope for becoming human again so ten years later inside a small village of France we meet a young girl named Belle who's a bookworm who wanders around the entire town and trying to go to the bookstore to pick out a latest uh, book that's that's being released as we know it but she decided to pick out uh, a fairy tale book that she read twice um, and the bookseller decided to give it to her right away and that beautiful uh, musical number right there um, while the, the rest of the townspeople started uh, spreading gossips all around saying a lot of uh, crazy things about uh, Belle, that she's beautiful, but she's also crazy. The fact that, after all, she is a bookworm. But I love that beautiful scene where she actually sat inside the, the fountain. She was reading the fairy tale book uh, along with the rest of the, the sheeps. Yeah, and she got to that page where they show the Prince Charming, that one sheep actually bit off the page, so that was cute. Uh, anyway, we then meet um, a muscular, 
handsome man who's also a jerk named Gaston, along with his goofy sidekick, LeFou, which Gaston decided to make plans by actually proposing uh, Belle to actually marry her. Unfortunately, um, Belle rejects the idea and decided to to dump him. So, after that, uh, she decided to go back home with her father, Maurice, who's an inventor, working on his latest contraption, which is a, a, a log cutter. And uh, enough for him to actually earn um, a reward um, at the fair for tomorrow. So it actually works, and decided to actually go to the fair with his horse, Philippe, so they were on their way until he took the wrong turn, was being attacked by wolves, and decided to have a place to stay inside the castle. The same castle where the young handsome prince lived once he got near to the gate. Unfortunately, he was feeling very cold, had a, had a big fever. He actually meets uh, the candlestick Lumiere along with the clock named... Cotsworth, as well as a teapot and a teacup named Mrs. Potts and her son Chip. So they offer him some service just to keep himself warm inside a comfy chair, you know, with the, the clothes hanger giving him some covers for him to cover himself, and, and of course the footstool, which has a dog. They gave him uh, a cup of tea. So he keeps himself warm and comfy until suddenly the beast had arrived and found out that Maurice is staying there and actually held him prisoner by taking him into the dungeon. So then the next day, Gaston, with his schemes, decided to find better ways to actually propose to Belle. But once again, she refuses and just kicked him out. Um, yeah, with LeFou actually trying to help out, you know, getting everything already set up, and didn't work out. So Belle decided to go outside, get away from them all, and just spend more than this conventional life. Because she wants the adventure in the Great White somewhere. So she'll understand. <laughs> so they want everyone to understand what she wants. Yeah, I know, I'm trying to bring in some lines from the movie. But then... But then Philippe had finally showed up. Yeah, of course, um, Maurice's uh, horse. But sadly, um, Maurice wasn't there, and, and then Belle decided to take uh, Philippe all the way back to the castle where he's staying. So Belle decided to find her father, Maurice, all the way up there, only to find out that he's in the dungeon, already trapped. But then the beast showed up, and Belle decided to take his place. So Belle decided to make uh, a deal with him by actually becoming his prisoner. While taking her father out of there and have him go straight to the village. And have, and have him escort him into the village. Without saying goodbye. Yeah, and that was really sad. So with the help of Lumiere... Uh, the beast decided to escort uh, Belle into her room and decided to, to tell her to do whatever she wants since it's her home. Except going into the West Wing because it's forbidden. It happens to be his room, by the way, so as we know it. So, um, and also offers her an, an invitation to go inside. Um, and also offers her an invitation to have dinner with each other, but of course that turned out to be a disaster because it didn't seem to work out. They weren't getting along as we know it. Meanwhile, Gaston is feeling disgraced after being dumped by Bill again while LeFou was trying to cheer him up with a song because no one says no to Gaston until Maurice had arrived only to warn them that there's a beast that's living inside the castle and already trapped Belle inside and decided to help her out of there but no one would believe him so they kicked them out but 
Gaston decided to make a plan by actually offering Monsieur the Ark by paying him to actually send Maurice into the insane asylum in order for him to make a proposal to Bell again. There you go. So things didn't work out for Bell and the Beast when they were trying to have dinner together because of his arrogance and and his anger problems. So Lumiere and Mrs. Potts was trying to find a way to cheer him up by being nice, kind, and gentle to her and try to lose his temper and try to control it completely. Yeah. So Cosworth had offered Lumiere to guard the door just making sure that Belle will come out. So she had to stay there for a couple hours until she finally went out just when Lumiere was making love with, with the maid girl. And Lumiere had offered her a meal to the tune of Be Our Guest. So at least she was lucky enough to actually have something. So it was like a brilliant performance right there. Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful dance number right there where they show a lot of uh, plates, silverware all around. Everything just seems like, wow, it was magical right there. Yeah, be our guest. So then Lumiere and Cotsworth decided to have her guided tour throughout the entire castle to see where she should go everywhere to look around. But unfortunately, she wants up going up into the West Wing, which it was forbidden. She didn't need to go up there. She shouldn't have, but she did anyway. So she went in behind the Cotsworths and Lumiere's back because they just went. She went inside. The entire room is a mess. Then she found a portrait of the young handsome prince as we know, it's all torn to shreds, all scratched up. And then she found the enchanted rose that's hidden inside a glass uh, jar and the magic mirror on the table until the beast had showed up and scared her away as she ran away with her father's horse, Philippe, until she got attacked by wolves. So the beast um, came up for the rescue to actually save her life by attacking these wolves until he got caught, left him uh, a bruise on his arm. So Bell had to uh, heal his wounds and try to forgive um, the beast for saving her life. And all, of it, and all of it is forgiven. So then, throughout the winter, they're trying to find ways to get to know each other very well. With the help of Cotsworths, uh, Lumiere, and Mrs. Potts. So things were going so well. They, you know, they actually uh, had breakfast, you know, having some uh, oatmeal. And then they wound up having snowball fights all around. And they actually went for lots of surprises. You know, getting dressed up, uh, getting ready to spend a romantic evening together. By uh, having food and then, and then later um, glance around the, the ballroom so they can have a wonderful dance together. Yeah, with Belle wearing a beautiful gorgeous uh, gold dress and the beast wearing a beautiful uh, coat blue coat that he has so they're dancing around in this beautiful moment to the song of the title Beauty and the Beast that's sung by Mrs. Potts and it was so beautiful the way they shot this because they actually blend in with CGI and hand-drawn animation by having the shots of the chandelier 
in gold and they show up on top of the roof you can see all these um, cupids and they've been changing around and all the way down there you just see Belle and the Beast you know, dancing, swinging around like that. It was twirling. It was just, oh, it was breathtaking right there. Very beautiful moment. Actually done by Pixar, by the way. <laughs> Pixar's uh, cap program to create these shots. So, everything went so well as, as they planned until Belle decided to tell the Beast that she wants to see her father again. She misses him so much. So the Beast decided to let her go, taking the magic mirror with her, because she just found out that her father is trying to go after her, trying to save her, but he's already sick. So she was on her way, only to find out that it had to happen. But Chip decided to stow away inside the, the Belle's bag along with the magic mirror. Just as Belle had taken her father into the house just to keep him warm, to make him feel better. Until Monsieur had showed up and had tried and was ready to send uh, Marisa into the asylum that Gaston had offered to do so and, and of course Gaston was trying his best to to have Bell um, propose again but it wasn't going to happen Bell had to bring in some proof that that the beast is all the way up to the castle you know just to warn the the entire townspeople that that Maurice is telling the truth, but unfortunately, Gaston had a plan that that he decided to to go after the beast and kill him. Which yep, they're under attack, so the rest of the the crew decided to make matters into their own hands by actually stopping them. Yeah, which that was one of the funniest moments right there was when you know, they were at war with them. While Gaston went all the way up to the West Wing and shoot an arrow at the beast and they had a huge fight during the, the final conclusion. While Belle and, and Maurice were on their way and you know, trying to save uh, the beast's life but the beasts, of course, fighting with Gaston. And it leads to uh, the end where Belle had finally went up up on top of the roof and just came back to the sea beast before Gaston had stabbed him and, and was fallen into his death. And it, this was a very sad moment right there. And, uh, wow. So, unfortunately, um, the beast had died, only to be transformed into a young, handsome prince, just as the petal had fell. It was a very sad moment, so now they're finally together again. And, and all, the, all the crew had now became human, and they all live happily ever after. There you go. Yep, I had to spoil the surprise, but that's okay. We got it there. Um, but it's a very excellent, well-made, very extraordinary, thrilling movie that I've ever saw. Definitely the right adaptation that Disney had to offer. It was just so beautiful, luxurious. I love the score that was done by Alan Minkin. We just did the score for The Little Mermaid, along with his late partner, Howard Ashman. Sad to say, because they were a wonderful team together. And I know due to his illness, at least Ashman was lucky enough to actually write all the lyrics 
from head to toe until his death. It just sad that he never got a chance to see the movie itself like he was hoping it would be. But it had a true great meaning right there with all the lyrics that's written perfectly. Um, the songs, everything from, from Be Our Guest to uh, Beauty and the Beast and all the rest. Yeah, no one says no to Gaston and and, uh, and of course uh, the song about the town, everything. And of course we even got the deleted song in the special edition of Beauty and the Beast which came out at the IMAX theaters and just went straight to DVD and then later on Blu-ray as you know it which had a perfect transition to it because I felt like they should have never had deleted it but I guess you know they didn't have time to put that in yeah for its running time because the original running time was 84 minutes but with the song included it's 91 minutes so it was perfect great cast that they got right here Pedro Hera, fine choice as uh, Belle. It was perfect. It definitely shows. I know originally they were going to get Jody Benson to do the voice, but they were going to chose her because uh, they wanted her to be more like a woman, in a way. Um, that's what I heard. Uh, Robbie Benson, definitely the right choice because because uh, he does have that. Uh, that powerful voice that's basically um, handsome as we know it um, and he does create that deep voice for the beast De definitely works because if you saw the movie uh, Harry and Son you know the one with Paul Newman there was a scene where he, was, he had a fight with his father and wh whenever he yells it's like you could hear an earlier version of the beast as we know it. So before he, he winds up having his normal voice, where it's all soft, calm, and tone. Yeah, it was perfect. Uh, Jerry Oldback. I mean, hard to believe he uses his French accent to to create that character with David Orton Steers as Cotsworth, doing a great job. Yeah, because after all, this, this is the guy who played Winchester on MASH. Yeah, Richard White, along with uh, Jesse Corti. Uh, yeah, Richard White uh, definitely had a powerful and operatic voice. It definitely works because you can tell how, how muscular he is. And he was very strong, too. I mean, especially with that song. So he was very good. Angela Lansbury, of course, uh, was just powerful as Mrs. Potts. Perfect choice, too, because after all, she has done a lot of Broadway musicals and, and all this other stuff. So I definitely love her, her song, uh, Beating the Beast. It definitely works. Yeah, and Bradley uh, Pierce, very cute as a chip. And of course, Joanne Worvey as the wardrobe. So yeah, everybody was good in this movie. And they did a great job uh, doing the, the voices. Yeah. And I know Disney had a hard time trying to uh, get this movie made. They tried to adapt it uh, back in the 30s and 50s, but that never happened. So it, it, they took them a lot of time to do so, mostly because, well, Disney was, was going through hard times. But after the success of The Little Mermaid, they finally had a chance, so they did it. And I'm glad they did. It was worth it. And I swear to God, this became my family's favorite film. I mean, we started seeing this movie many times. I mean, I saw this uh, many times on home video after I saw the film twice with my brother, Jason. Uh, Eileen wasn't born yet, and you know, my sister. So that was like a year later, and and we bought the the VHS uh, in 1992. Yeah, I mean nobody can't stop talking about this movie. 
I mean, it, it was the first movie to be nominated for Best Picture, but sadly didn't win. But it did won um, the original score and the original song, so I'm glad that worked out. And, yeah, I mean, I, I remember watching the music video for the film that was sung by Celine Dion and People Bryson. I remember... Uh, my grandmother, or which I called her auntie, my, my other grandmother, um, she started um, bringing in the VHS tape where she was working with um, an actress who's no longer with us. Yeah, this is the same person uh, who actually started sending us a lot of stuff for all these movies. And I, I also had uh, other merchandising for for Beauty and the Beast. It was fun. We just never got tired of that movie. It was it, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And the movie was so popular that they end up having sequels. They they had the Christmas uh, direct to video uh, movie along with uh, Bell's Magical World. They even had a TV series called Send Me a Story, which had a live-action version of Belle. Which, surprisingly enough, I actually did went to uh, see a show, which that's what the TV show was based on. And I actually met her when I went to uh, Glendale Galleria in Glendale, California, where they actually had a show uh, back in 1998, where we saw Belle just reading a, a different story with the rest of the kids and parents around and yeah they were at the corner where Sam Goody is at I remember that day too because I was with my father along with Jason and Eileen so we had a good time Yeah, I wish they put that on DVD already uh, the TV show Send Me a Story I, I did actually found some episodes, but I kind of wish um, I wish we had uh, the rest of the series because I know they play this on in syndication. They actually play this on KKL Nine, yeah, Channel Nine in Los Angeles. So I definitely remember that show, Send Me a Story. Anyway, it's just. It's such an amazing movie. I really enjoyed this a lot. I mean, it would always remain as a classic, no doubt about it. Um, definitely pick this movie out if you must, because it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. So anyway, I give Beauty and the Beast, the 1991 animated classic, Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.